work. It's working. I should show, we should be, uh, the video should show up any second now, but it's delayed. All right, this shot will be fun because we have quite a bit, there's quite a bit of a delay there. I can hear you through Zoom, yeah. So I'm going to, let me just address the audience here. Hey, everybody, this is Walter with Access Electric, and I'm here with uh, Phil, and we're going to go over a schematic that he sent me, and we're trying to get a better understanding of what this, uh, this piece of equipment does. And I have, uh, I have the schematic, and uh, we'll, I've also created a, a live, uh, basically a live drawing uh, I've shown on some of my videos where you can energize different things and, and see what's happening. So we're going to go through that together. Um, uh, Phil, would you like to say anything as we, uh, before we go? Well, I don't know about that, but I'll try. <laughs> All right. I'm going to, um, let me see if I can show a, it's basically a drawing. Hopefully I do this right, but it's, it's a drawing of the schematic you sent me. And, um, can you, can you see that there on the screen? You're not seeing it come up in YouTube Live, uh, the schematic that you sent me? I am on your channel and I cannot see it. I apologize. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. So you, you see that schematic. And so uh, I wonder if I can make that full screen uh, or bigger uh, so that I can. Oh, perfect. All right, so basically what I did was I took this drawing and I just drew it out uh, once again uh, in, in kind of a live software so we can kind of go through and see what's going on. Um, but you can see, uh, really, there's no, it, it's kind of complicated, but it's not, it's not terrible. Um, you basically have a manual control and, and a bypass control for this 10-horse uh, motor that's uh, on this drawing and, um, and, and I'm going to, I'm going to transition over here to a different computer showing this live graphic. Okay. And it's basically this drawn. It doesn't look identical. Some of the, the, the handoff autos look like they're in the opposite. Like they say auto offhand, but I needed, what I needed was, um, like if you look at that first handoff auto button on the bottom left, um, near the bottom left, there's a handoff yes. auto. It's a switch to SS. And do you understand what the, uh, you see right there below the 3B, you see a 00X. Yes. And then below the, th the other 3B, you see X00. Yes. You understand what that, what those symbols mean? No. Okay. So when you see those symbols, you have the, a three, this is a three position selector switch. And what that's saying is the, the top contact from 3B to 4B, that top contact, it is open in the left position. It's open in the center position. 
but it's closed in the right position. That's what the X stands for. So the switch is open, uh, left open, center open, right closed. Let's power go through from 3B to 4B, if that makes sense. Okay. The, bottom, the bottom part of that switch, the second set of contacts, it's X00, which is exactly the opposite. It's closed in the left position, but open in the center and open in the right position. Okay. okay. So... Yeah, you'll see it. Uh, you'll see it on on pretty much all your um, a, a good drawing anyway. If it's a good drawing, it'll show you the the X O O or the O X X or the X X O or. But this is a typical start stop where the left will have one contact closed and the right will have the other contact closed. But the in the middle in the off position, both contacts will be open, and so you can see right now. It's, it's showing in center position where both contacts are open. Okay, does that make sense? So let me switch us to kind of a live drawing. And uh, let's see. It'll take a second to come up because of the delay here on YouTube Live. One of these days I'll figure out a better way to do this. <laughs> so you tell me when you can see it on your YouTube Live screen. You see it. So basically, uh, I am in the, um, the drawing environment right now uh, where I drew everything in. All these boxes, when I turn the circuit on, all those boxes will disappear. It'll look, you'll, that'll happen here in a second. There you go. All the boxes disappear, and now you see a, a much cleaner look. And I tried to mimic the look, you know, uh, the, the breaker is a little bit different um, here. Uh, your drawing had a magnetic style breaker. Uh, this one has a standard style breaker. Uh, there's, there, is a there are switches here, just like your drawing had. Uh, your drawing showed here in this area, right, um, right in this area, your, your drawing showed line reactors. Well, I didn't have line reactors in my software to throw in here, uh, but really, it doesn't really matter for control purposes. It just matters for, you know, getting that signal not bouncing back and forth, you know, and causing damage to your VFD. So I, I wouldn't, or to the wiring. So I don't have that drawn. Other than that, the drawing, um, at, uh, the drawing's pretty similar. I, I had to do some creative things here uh, because this drawing doesn't really show you uh, and I'm going to get a bunch of, I'm sure, a bunch of knuckleheads that watch this video on YouTube. And they're going to say, hey, what do you have a contact? You got contacts inside your VFD. That's not how a VFD works. You know, VFDs, they, they, they use the MOSFETs and they, they, they create the, uh, you know, the, the um, I can't think of the name right now. It's off the off top of my head. It just, it just left me. But um, they, they manipulate the sine wave. You know, they chop up the sine wave and do all that. I know that. I know that. But I just want to create a drawing here um, that we can walk through and understand uh, without uh, I, I, I can't create I can't I can't create that here in this drawing. So when the VFD closes, it's just a contact that's going to close and the motor is going to start. Just pretend it's, you know, it's ramping of the speed up. OK, um, in the in the meantime, so let's close the circuit. Now, as you can see, I close it. You can see these lines turn blue and power is coming right up to these contacts. Okay, so um, so what I love about this program, I can turn off the breaker. There's no power except to the breaker. And then I can turn the breaker back on. And all my lines are made up to basically up until they're stopped by something, which right now they're stopped by normally open contacts on the, uh, on the, on the normal control and on the bypass control. And also, also obviously in the VFDs not on. Okay, so, so, so far so good, right? All right, so this, following along. So I'm gonna scroll down a little bit. We're, we're gonna come revisit these, um, but actually let me, 
Well, th this might make it more convoluted. I don't know. But let me turn the power off. It's going to show me kind of a funny looking screen. And I'm actually going to turn off all that too. And I'm going to scroll down just a little bit. And you can see you have, you have your, your, your NM coil and your BM coil right here. Those are the coils that were at the top of the screen, yes. right? So looking at these coils, you see those blue lines that, that appear? Yes, blue wires. Yeah, the, three. the three lines, they're just, they're highlighting that there's something connected to this coil. When this coil closes, there's something connected to it, right? Well, what's connected to it is, if I go back up, this BM, if I go like that, you see the three lines going back down? Okay. So when the, coil, when the coil is energized, the contacts BM close. Or when the NM coils are energized, I'm, I'm sorry, when the coil for NM is energized, these contacts will close. Okay, when the VFD gets a start signal, those contacts will close. I know they're not contacts in a real VFD, know that, but they'll close. And then, the, and then if this is, so here in the normal setup, you need the VFD to run, you need the, the normal mode contact to be closed, then the motor will run as long as your overloads aren't tripped, right? Okay, so here you need you need the VFD and you need the the normal mode contactor. In bypass mode, you just need power on and you need the bypass mode contactor to come on. That's all you need. Okay, following along. All right. So let me move my mouse down here. Okay, so now we get into we're coming off of our basically line. Um, here we came off a of line two. And we came off a of line three and we're feeding a control transformer and I couldn't find an exact control transformer drawing just like yours. Yours has had a multi-tap transformer on it. Don't even worry about that. All you need to know is, is 208 was coming in, 110 is coming out, right? So, um, so here on the 110 side, something... No, that's called that's a fuse. It's a fuse. fuse. Okay. All right. Yeah. So um, at least the first two there were numbered. I didn't number on the one ten side. Uh, Should have, I guess. That'd be like a two amp fuse and a three amp fuse. It depends on the KVA of the transformer. You'd want to protect the transformer. No, it's not a two amp and a three amp. They're just we're we're just numbering the fuses. Uh, I think they were numbered in your original drawing, and I basically put the same. I tried to put the same labels on everything. Okay. okay. So, and I think the label on this fuse, I probably missed. I'm sure it's probably labeled, but I just noticed that I don't have it labeled on your drawing here, on this drawing. But I wouldn't worry about that. Basically, um, once, let's turn, the, let's turn all this on. And you can see that my breaker is closed. I am energizing the, the 208 of my transformer. And then I'm creating 110 volts. And so on the bottom of the transformer, I have 110 volts. I have uh, the red representing the hot wire and the, 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 that cayenne blue color representing the neutral. Okay. Okay. So now I got my 110. So... When you start your system, you turn the breaker on all your and say all your selector switches. I think you have three selector switches on your panel. I have three selector switches in this drawing. All your selector switches are right now would be in the off mode. Okay, so right now this, draw, this drawing is showing the selector switches in the off mode. I have a selector switch right here and you can see the arrow is pointed into the off mode. Okay, so let me scroll down just a little bit more and we're going to lose the, we're going to stop seeing all this motor control at the top. Just know that 
if the VFD comes on and normal mode comes on, the motor is going to run. Or if bypass comes on all by itself, the motor is going to run. But I, I want to scroll down a little bit so we can get a, a bird's eye view here of the controls. Okay. Wish I could fit everything on, the, on one screen, but it's, it's a little difficult. All right. So here we see, we see our 110 coming down, and we see, we see our controls just like we drew it, right? Uh, right now, power comes through, terminal block, it comes down. Um, and it, when you turn the power on, you have control power. Right now, you have a light on the front of your panel. And on your drawing, it's a clear light. I didn't use clear here because you can't see when it's operating. You know, so I, I, I changed it to a green light. So if I, if I kill the fuse, the green light goes off. Right? Lost power. If I, if I, if I fix the fuse, I just replace the fuse. <laughs> and, and the green light came back on. All right, so now, as I continue uh, to look at these drawings, um, so nothing else is happening. I just have control power, and I've energized this control circuit number one has, gone, has become energized. And it's become energized because my overload this is an overload, and this is a, uh, a normally closed um, contact on the overload. So if I came back up and I, and I, I um, tripped my overload, oh, did I forget to connect those? Let's, let's see. I sure did. So let's see. Let's assign. I forgot. I thought I had this done, but I guess I didn't. Associate reaction to. Oh, wait a minute. Let's see. Where is that? Right here. Assign to switch group. And I'm just going to assign it to the overload. So now you can see they're connected. A little behind the scenes there. Okay. Let me turn that back on. And now if my overload trips, I have now an external um, fault light comes on saying, hey, your overload tripped. There's a problem. You'll notice I lost power to CR1, and this normally closed contact is just allowing power to go through to the light. So let me, if, I res if I reset my overload, CR1, the normally closed contact, opens. Because, uh, actually, yeah, that would be oh, it's a normally open contact. Normally open contact um, and it, no, it's normally closed. It's a normally closed contact. See, I got power to CR1 now, and it opened. So it's normally closed, and it opens when CR1 is energized. That's right. That's right. Okay. okay. So I lost my light. My light turned off. CR1 is on. Let me scroll down a little bit. And so um, your overload should stop the motor, obviously, and it, it, should, it should also give you a warning light on your, on your control panel. Uh, as far as I know, I don't know how you have it set, but yeah, it would be... As far as I know from here, I, I'm manually resetting it here on the drawing. Yes. Um, and that'd probably be a good idea. I mean, what's the use of a warning light if it resets yeah. itself and then it starts working? You don't even know. I mean, you're not there in the room when it's when when it tripped, right? So, and you want somebody to come in and go, "Hey, there's a problem. Something caused the problem." Uh, I know a lot a lot of people just, "Hey, the fuse is blue. Let's replace the fuses," and and then what happens, what happens uh, two hours later? The fuse is blue again. Hey, there's something wrong with these fuses. Let's put in bigger fuses. No, no, no. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Uh, now, now your wire becomes a fuse. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, you burn the building down. It's a good way to burn a building down. So, all right. So we got to this point. 
and we're going to come over and we're going to look. So now power comes over and it feeds our first handoff auto. I know I have it listed here as auto offhand, but uh, basically I did this because I wanted the operation in the same positions. Um, okay. So remember we said in our drawing, this was X O O. So when the switch is to the left, the top rung should be energized, right? And when the switch is to the right, it should energize this. It should energize the bottom contact. Yes. All right. So I'm going to switch it to the left, and the top rung energizes, and now it says it's looking for a customer supplied start signal. Right, so you have building control that is calling. Uh, to come on off schedule. Yeah, and I don't know, is this, this is like an air handling or? It's an air handling. Okay, so your, your building control, it's on a timer or on, a, it's got sensors like uh, probably thermostats or whatever it is. And it's saying, hey, I need you to come on. And that's your external signal. So. Here, what they did in your panel was they gave you terminal terminal block number nine and terminal block number eleven. And they took number nine out to your building control panel, and then they brought it back on number eleven. And now there's there's. It it. It would, this would be a startup signal, so it should be a relay in your building control panel that says, hey, I need you to come on, right? H how that's wired, I, I, I didn't dive into that, um, but, um, but basically just getting to this panel, you're just looking for, you're just looking basically for continuity between number nine and number 11. You're looking for a close of a switch somewhere that takes power from nine and takes it to 11. So um, something else I just noticed that for whatever reason isn't working in my drawing here is um, I should have a switch that or a little button that pops up to give me that external signal. So let me now, I created this in a different on a different computer. Then I put it on a thumb drive, brought it over here, put it on this computer. So maybe, I don't know, maybe I lost something. Don't know. Um, we're, we're learning along here. So where was it? It is. If I can remember where it is. Well, I can force it on anyway. Let me turn it back on and I can say, all right. Did I turn it on? I did. Let's see what is happening. No, it doesn't like that. It doesn't. Oh, that, duh, all right. All right, so I went ahead and manually closed the customer supplied start signal. Okay. And you'll see that once the, once the building control uh, panel, once the building control um, system sends you that signal from nine, closes nine and 11 through probably a dry contact on a relay, that you get this you get the start auto relay, right? Okay. All right, let, let, me, let me turn the power off here real quick and you'll, let me highlight that. And when that start auto relay, when that start auto relay closes, when that, when that receives power, 
you can see the two contacts that are associated with that relay. The 2CR contact. So um, basically you're going to get you're going to get two two contacts that close. So let me turn the power back on. Let me close the switch again. Let me close the customer switch again and now you'll see that 2CR closes and 2CR closes right here and that will give you an auto a start and auto mode signal. Okay. But my 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 uh my drive isn't running. Why isn't my drive running? There is, there is. Do you remember I needed my drive to be on and I needed my normal, my normal mode to be on in order to run that motor, right? Do you remember that? Yes, you have your uh, normal motor contact and your bypass motor contact. Correct. So I, I needed to get the drive to run, I need the normal motor contact closed, right? It's also going to close this run enable, right? The, the, the VFD needs a run enable signal to run. So it won't run unless it's, it, unless it's it, we, we tell it, hey, you're enabled to run. There's no faults. There's nothing that's going to keep you from running. Um, as a matter of fact, in your drawing, I believe terminal five to terminal six is like, uh, we'll pull the drawing up again. Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know how hard it would be to do it right now. And you should see that drawing come back up now. Um, somewhere. Oh, maybe it wasn't here. I thought that terminal block right at the bottom left, uh, uh, terminal block five and terminal black, or I one TB five and one TB six. It shows yes. a it shows a basically a jumper there. Um, no, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Um, no, I thought it said something there, but it, apparently it doesn't. Let me go back to my live. I'm drawing here. Whoops, wrong camera. Okay. All right. So, so we're come back, coming back here. And uh, basically what I was saying with this, you could interrupt this if you'd never, if you wanted to stop it from going into normal mode or bypass mode. If you wanted to, if you put something in here to turn off, it would never start. Um, so you could you could put something in between terminal block five and six to keep it from starting if you wanted to, but that's just okay. there for your convenience. Okay. So now I'm going to take my other switch and I'm going I'm to switch it to um, normal mode. Okay, you see that. Okay, now it's a normal mode and my normal mode contactor turned on. So now if I scroll to the top, you'll see my normal mode contacts are actually on, but the VFD is still off. That's right. Okay, so I'm going to scroll back down. So what am I missing? I am missing here at the VFD. The VFD needs to be told, are you in hand mode? Or are you in auto mode? So we are in auto mode. And now what you have is your VFD is running, your normal mode is running, and your motor is running. Okay. A lot had to happen there. Okay. Um, 
you had to have whoops you had to have um and i'll show you what i have below this i had uh i had a little logic in there because uh the vfd is programmed right the vfd the vfd is programmed that in auto mode it needs the auto selected it needs it needs run enable selected and it needs a start signal and it won't run unless you have all three of those things made okay so i put under underneath here it's not part of your drawing and it's not that you need it it's just showing you i had to mimic what the drive is seeing or what the drive is doing and so underneath here i just created a, a new power source and i said you know is auto mode uh, what a uh, contact for auto mode a contact for for um, s the start and a contact for run enable and if if those are closed then the vfd will actually start and the con it showed the contacts coming on at the top i know it's not contacts but you know what i mean it shows it shows them coming on the vfd starts um there's are you kidding me how come stuff i did doesn't save ridiculous okay um so anyway um actually i think it did work i think it did so i'm going to um now the re now so auto mode you got right that's basically it the, the vfd is running it's running in um the normal mode contactor is on the vfd is running and it's this is running normally this is how it would run Okay. To do so, I had to put the three handoff autos basically in the position of XOO. Basically, all three of them are in that same position. Okay. Now, so if I come over to my VFD and I say, I just want you to run in manual mode. So my VFD is still running in manual mode. The normal mode contactor is still closed and I'm in manual manual operation. Okay. So let me let me turn that off. Let me go back to uh let's see, what do I which position do I want it in? Okay, I'm going to put in, uh, let's go back to hand mode. Let's do that. Let's go back to hand mode. And now, actually, let's just turn it off. Okay, now, let me turn, let me turn that off. And now I want to, I need to run this in bypass mode, right? Basically, something happens to your VFD. You've got to take it out of service. Well, you can do that. You can do that. So something happens to your VFD, you want to take it out of service so you can you can fix it, replace it. You're going to run the whole motor. Yeah, it's either on or it's off. There, there is no 30%, 60%. There's none of that. Um, so now you can come in here and you can say you can, turn, you can uh, put this in hand mode. You can put this in hand mode. And now B, uh, motor BM or bypass mode is on. The motor is running. We've bypassed the VFD now. How do I take that out of service? Well, you got to open up your your. Well, this was there. There was a switch, a field service switch. You would need to open up that, um, and and now you have no power. This is showing energized only because that's the. Uh, I didn't put a switch in here, but that's basically the 24 volt generated by the VFD itself. So that would die. when you that would that would turn off when you turn off the, the 208 to the to the drive it would i mean you'd have to give it you know give it 20 seconds but it'll bleed off right and it'll turn off and then and then you're able to, to unwire this vfd motor's still running you got to be careful because you got your hands in that panel you still got to take some shock protection some 
some arc flash protection, whatever you're gonna do, just be careful. But you could remove this VFD and serve it and and um, because you're this contactor and this service switch, well, don't forget your lockout tag out, all that, right? But so lock out that contactor, lock out that service switch, and now you've isolated the VFD, you can remove it. You can go down to your supplier, pick up a new one, go to a shelf, get 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 the same one. You're gonna have to program it similarly. Put it in here, wire it back up exactly the same way, fire it up, test out everything, make sure it's working. So um, I actually kind of like this setup where the, with the service, uh, with the service uh, the VFD service switch and the, the normal mode contactor because it does give you that isolation to pull this drive. Um, what else? Um, Oh, and, and bypass, let's see. What was I going to say? In, let's see, what one? I don't remember. Oh, bypass mode is still on. So, yeah, it's run is, an enable, is not enabled um, because the NM contactor is off. And the NM contactor can't come on because the bypass mode, the bypass contactor is on. So you're, keep, you're basically isolating the two contacts from each other. With that's what these two switch, these two contacts are doing. If 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 this one's running, this one can't run. If this one's running, this one can't run. Okay, the one last thing. Let's put this back in um, in auto mode, okay? And I'm going to uh, put that in auto mode. And now, okay, I'll start that over so we can see what just happened. But what I want you to keep an eye on, and, and I just arbitrarily picked 10 seconds just and I created a timer here because I, I can't simulate the drive ramping up to speed, right? So let me let me turn that off. And so now you see the drive is off, drive isn't running, right? But inside the drive, what's happening is when when your drive comes on, it wants to it's ramping up to speed. So it depends a 10 horse motor, it's only gonna take it's not going to take long at all. It's just like, it's up to speed, right? But when you have a big old 200 horse motor, it takes a while. You know, it's going to take 10 seconds, sometimes longer to ramp up all the way, especially like a decanter or something like that. Holy cow, they're scary to even be around. They sound like a gen engine starting. Um, the whole room shakes, you know. <laughs> so uh, that takes it doesn't take a second. It takes a few seconds to ramp up to speed. So what what happens is you had this switch on your drawing. They were on your drawing also. Let's see. Let me pull up your drawing one more time. Let me switch. It's also it's always a little difficult. Here it is. Let me pull that up one more time. It'll take a second because of our YouTube delay. Okay. So I can't I can't put my mouse on it but if you look on the bottom right just you'll see that um, that X 50 TB 25 and 26 it's called VFD run at the right at the bottom of the VFD itself yes. okay 25 and 26 and then they're going out to terminal blocks 13 and 14 okay. see that and it says closes on motor run. So I'm going to go back to the drawing. Back to the schematic, I should say. And you see what I'm talking about is right here. Okay, this would close on motor run. So 
what that would what that would say is when the motor is at the speed, close. Now I don't know that I don't see anywhere where you're using this, but you could use this as a signal to something else. Say this motor has to be running before something else could run, um, or or it could be as simple as when the motor is at speed, a light comes on. It could be as simple as any anything like that. But I wanted to include it because it was in your drawing. And so I just created this. Once you get the start signal, you have a, a contactor that closes. Basically, it's a timer. And that timer is going to count till 10 seconds. And then it's going to close. And it's going to uh, close this, relay, this, this uh, auxiliary contact right here inside the VFD. Uh, and then when that closes, it could, it could perform another operation if you needed it, okay? So, uh, and now let me put it in auto mode and you'll see this timer begin to count down. And you can see right there, the timer begins to count. And then once the timer times all the way down, you'll see, you'll see this, con this contact closes which forces this contact to close. Now, you don't see any of this wiring in the field. You don't see it when you're looking at the drive, but that's what's happening inside the drive, in, okay. right? And, and so your drive then is at speed, this closes, and it can perform some other operation. So let me, let's see, how about, let's do that. All right, so does that make a lot more sense? Uh, a lot of sense okay, hopefully that was helpful. Um, it's it's really it's not it's not terribly difficult. It's just working your way through the circuit and understanding like that the whole XOO thing and the OOX, uh, understanding what those things mean. Um, and okay, oh, now I know if it's in this position, it'll do this. If it's in that position, it'll do that. And and just those little things, I think that's probably the only thing that probably was off for you, maybe. It was, and it was something pretty simple. Yeah, I, I, I sort of thought that it was a three position, maintain, select and push. Uh, yeah. I thought it was, you know, open, up, all contact. Pretty much, uh, yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So three positions. They give you a lot of options. Where you you know you've got you've got something that can be on in the left position, also keeping something off as at the same time. And then in the right position, you can do the exact opposite. You can do a combination. It depends. When you order your switches, if you look through uh, like AB's books, I don't know if these are Alan Bradley or if these are Cutler Hammer or Square D or what these are. Um, when you're looking through the book and ordering them, you'll see those symbols, X XOO and OOX and uh, OXX and XXO. And you know, you've got tons of different options. And so you can get you can get crazy creative with your circuiting, um, but um, you know what's nice about this um, going through and understanding a circuit like this, as these things become easier and easier, it gets to a. It's nice to see guys get to a level where I I can give them a blank piece of paper and say I need this to do this, and then they can draw me up a schematic that gets me there. And, and there's might be five different ways to draw it up to, to get to that result. And it's kind of neat watching, watching somebody get to the point where they can work their way through that. And they can now now they're becoming creative, you know, and they're not and this, this kind of stuff becomes a lot less, a lot less intimidating. Yeah, hopefully it turns out all right, you know, because uh, I got I'm watching over here on a monitor and I I've got uh, 
you know, I've got, I don't know, three different computers going right now, feeding this live stream. Uh, and who knows if it's working? I, I hope the sound came through and all that, but uh, hopefully this was helpful to you. And, you know, you've, get, you've given me a lot of uh, ideas. Uh, if I'd like to improve on my set, it took us a while to get started today because we were trying to get audio levels and everything going. Uh, actually, let me turn off the circuit because it's probably bleeding noise into the system. Um, anyway, it, it um, you gave me the idea because I've been wanting to do live streams for a while and uh, didn't know exactly how I'd do it because, you know, if, if you'd... This took a while to set up. I had to create this drawing. I had to make sure I understood what was happening in your drawing um, and kind of modify the drawing so it would kind of do something similar to what you're doing so we can get an idea what's happening. Well, if, if, I, if you just called me right now on a live stream and said, hey, can you make this happen? I don't know. Let me think about it for a second. You know, yeah. part of that was intimidating, right? Oh man, they're gonna ask me a, a question. I'm gonna look like a like a dummy, you know. Uh, but uh, give me a second, and I'll figure it out. Um, and so you gave me the idea of, uh, you know, uh, if other people end up watching this video, hey, watch it. Comment below. Tell me if you learned something. Uh, also, if you have drawings that man, you're just struggling trying to understand this drawing, uh, send it to me. If I can, if I can. Um, do something similar to this to help you understand, kind of walk you through. Um, I'd be happy to do it. And I, this could be kind of a regular event. We could do like, you know, 10 minute Tuesdays, although this probably lasted more than 10 minutes. But, um, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it and usually is a small thing. It's usually a, a small thing. Uh, but uh, you know what, Phil? Uh, I'm glad you didn't let this intimidate you, and you wanna you wanna go pursue and you wanna learn and you wanna figure it out, because that that's how that's how it's done. I mean, if you you know, there's lots of things that I'd like to do. And sometimes, um, you know, like computer programming, I'd love to know how to do computer programming, right? And then I start delving into it. And I'm like, Oh, my goodness, this is going to take how many hours is this going to take? Is it worth the time at this point? I don't know. I admire people that can do it. But it, it you know, um, you know, my, my wife says, uh, you know, uh, Everybody wants to learn how to play a guitar, right? No, that's not true. Everybody no. wants to know how to play a guitar. They don't want to learn how to play a guitar. Right. And the two are very, very different things. You want to just pick one up and you, you know all the chords and you, 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 you got your strumming patterns down, you do all that. No, but the guys that are good at it, they've been doing it their whole life. And they, yeah. So, uh, yeah, practice with this stuff. Also, um, I could always send you this file, this company, this company, it's CHM software. I think it is, uh, it's, this is called constructor software. Um, it, it, it's not free. They used, this is version 15. They used to have a, a version 12 viewer and I, that, that I think was free, but I, I haven't been able to find, uh, the link and, um, I should probably reach out. They've been really, really good about um, when I didn't have a symbol that I needed. They've actually created me a symbol um, and sent it to me, um, which we actually used one of them today. But they've been really, really good about that. And it's not a free software thing. It's 500 bucks. But, um, but then I'd be happy to... If you had the software, I could I could save this file, send it to you, and then you could turn it on and you could mess with it and you can. Oh, oh. Yeah, I'll purchase it. Yeah. yeah. Sure, we will do. And uh, that goes for everybody else uh, listening. Uh, if you come up with ideas, need help, uh, reach out to me. Give me a call. And um, uh, Phil, I don't know how to, I don't know how you found my phone number, but you gave me a call and uh, you were resourceful. <laughs> <laughs>
Right on. Yeah. It was fun. It's not going to be fun if I find out this video didn't come out on YouTube right. But <laughs> but no, it, it's fun. And I, and I enjoy helping people. So uh, that's what we're here for, right? Um, All right, Phil. Thank you very much. And uh, um, I'm going to sign off of YouTube here. Um, and uh, thank you, everybody, for watching. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Uh, leave a comment below. And again, if you want me to analyze your drawings, uh, just reach out and we'll make something happen. All right. Take care.